When the counter approaches zero, I want you to click on three frames off the TV. Any three. They'll meld with the data and we won't know what they are. That's the download code. I hope you're ready to fry your frontal lobes with this 1995 cyberpunk thrill ride that took the movie world by... Meh. Originally written by the godfather of cyberpunk himself, novelist William Gibson, during a stint as a somewhat unsuccessful screenwriter for The Hollywood Meat Grinder. Directed by a first-timer Robert Longo in a, excuse the pun, virtual nobody in the film world, other than having done a bunch of cool music videos for some pretty awesome bands like Megadeth, R.E.M., and New Order, before TriStar decided to jump in and hand this guy the job at making something out of $25 million. This is Johnny Mnemonic. Hit me. Oh, um, hey, do I need a mouth guard to... Who thought inside a pizza oven would look good for an opening text scroll? It's the second decade of the 21st century and big corporations rule. There's some deadly plague called NAS which has appeared with no known cause or cure and is quickly spreading throughout the world. A resistance group of data pirates called Lotex are fighting a war against these evil corporations which have implemented deadly Yakuza fighters to aid them. So the Lotex have to use mnemonic carriers, people with implanted hard drives, to transfer the data from place to place in secret. In other words, this artistic choice, playing flashlight tag with my pupils, is pretty much telling us every key plot point in the movie, so there's literally nothing to be surprised about. So fuck it! Movie over! I'm gonna go find that bag of gummy bears you lost under the seat yesterday. Dude, seriously? Fine. I don't know why anyone would need to watch this after it's basically being spoiled in the first minute of turning on the movie. And look at this! That's horrible! This is the blandest looking title screen I've ever- Ow! What the hell was that? I don't think I'm supposed to get early 90s particle effect in my eyes. Ugh. Oh well. Okay, so since we're down a headset, we're gonna have to go ahead and watch. Oh, Ow! I'm sorry, we're gonna have to go ahead and watch this on the big screen. Said it was sorry. They're taking the internet being called the information superhighway to the extreme. That's the Matrix. Uh, that's the wrong movie. Remember? No, that's what William Gibson liked to refer to this place as in his. His book. There's a book? Never mind. I wish you could see what I see. Beautiful. So we enter the shitter net of the future and it looks like someone screen capped a Sega Saturn shitting on itself. I don't know which is worse, the polygon sharper than most kitchen knives I've owned or the sound effects like dropping one in a garbage disposal. We meet our protagonist, Johnny, played by a flesh-colored claw hammer named Keanu Reeves, as he wakes up from a nap to check if anyone responded to one of those social media rants he posted on Big Bang Theory. And it appears Johnny isn't alone, as he's paid for the company of a lady of the night, played by Robin Crosby. Is that why he's called Johnny? Johnny? Yeah. Never mind. At least we know he responds to his name if called. NAS, nerve attenuation syndrome. So where is home, Johnny? Home. Home.
Jiggle the mouse. Would you believe I don't even know? I will remember you. Skipping out on the after sex cuddle, Robin makes her way for the door. Going out? Just getting some ice. We've got. Well, there goes your rating on Yelp. Can you rate hookers on Yelp? Why? I feel like giving your ex a couple of stars. Johnny doesn't pout over paid for pussy long. He has an important business call to make with his broker, Ralphie, played by Udo Cure. Pick it up, Ralphie. So, Ralphie and Johnny discuss the deal about getting a hard drive device called a wet wire implant surgically removed from Johnny's brain, along with all of his memories restored. But Ralphie has some bad news. I'm sorry, Johnny. This Shiba neurosurgeons have changed their quote. You told me 800k would cover it. The fee for removing the implant is now 1 million five. That is complete memory recovery. If you don't want it all back, I think that will come down. Oh, I see the medical field hasn't changed much in the future. Hey, what happened to your bandages? Oh, I got better. Oh. I want a full restoration. I want it all back. The surgery Johnny had been saving up all his allowance for has now doubled in price, now needing to do one more job to cover the cost. I wonder what Johnny's Yelp score looks like. Why, he isn't a prostitute that I know of. It sure looks like he's getting fucked for money. The price gouging doesn't sit well with Johnny, but he has no choice if he wants to regain the part of his brain that they took out to implant his hard drive. Like an idiot, he decides to take another job. So what have you got? It depends. Did you get that upgrade we were discussing? Yeah. Very good. Wait a minute. If he had enough money for the procedure already, why would he have gotten an upgrade for another job? It's actually less confusing in the Japanese version where he actually has to buy the upgrade in an upcoming scene. Huh. This cut just makes him seem like an idiot. Like, more of an idiot. Pick up his in Central Beijing tomorrow night. Ten o'clock. This is a big one. Don't be late, Johnny. Yeah, he's setting you up for a big one, all right. In the next scene, we either see a riot in progress or somebody brought out another iPhone as the taxi tries to weave its way through the crowd. Unable to go any further, Johnny decides to get out and head for the hotel on foot. Okay, so he could just freely get out of the cab and wander around without being pushed and trampled by a bunch of pissed off protesters, but I end up getting a black eye from a flying elbow during breakfast rush at McDonald's. Apparently he's entered Rapture from Bioshock. <laughs> ah! Or the Stanley Hotel opened a branch in China. A Mr. Smith is paged over the intercom, which is prompt for Johnny to make his way to the elevator. Keanu Reeves, Mr. Smith, The Matrix. So while waiting for the elevator to arrive, the television broadcast playing behind Johnny is hacked by what I'm guessing is the face thing from the board game level of Gunstar Heroes. Johnny starts setting up to make sure he has enough space in his head drive by using a device called a doubler, something that allows a hard drive to double the space it has the ability to contain. You know, like how actual hard drives can't. Activating Pemex Memory Doubler. Your present capacity, 80 gigabytes. Doubler loading. Looking out over the early PS1 cutscene are a pair of ominously photoshopped eyes that look like they're going to be attached to the villain of this story. But nope, it's just some nerdy Pharmacom scientist played by Arthur Ng and Von Flores as they wait for their courier to show. Jehovah's Witnesses must have a hard time around here. Double cheese anchovies? 
And that's how it would have ended doing something stupid like that around a bunch of jumpy people holding guns to your face. Instead, we just see Johnny get reprimanded like a 12-year-old for being late. You are Mr. Smith. You are late. Sorry, Dad. Question. Yes. You don't look like the kind of people I usually work for. That was actually a statement. We are new at this. No shit. <laughs> Let's see what you want to upload. Johnny decides to go ahead and take the job despite his client's obvious lack of experience beefing up the security of the room with a motion detector on the door so they have a little more warning if something happens to go down. Personally, I like the three ninjas setup a lot better. Rocky the Elf. Run, Tommy, stop! Go, How much am I carrying? 320 gigabytes. <laughs> your storage capacity. Where am I taking it? Newark. What's your favorite color? Magenta. How are babies made? There are fields. Endless fields. Your storage capacity. More than adequate. So instead of telling his clients that he can't possibly hold that amount of data and devising a solution to the problem by, I don't know, jamming another hard drive up his ass or something, Johnny decides to go ahead with the job. Because this is the Johnny Mnemonic universe, where hard drive space is unlimited despite manufactured capacity, just like the abundance of stupidity. So are you taking to Las Vegas? I just started. It is extremely dangerous. Good thinking. Never play a good movie in the middle of your shitty one. Hey! If the upload volume exceeds your storage capacity, synaptic seepage can kill you in two or three days. Plus, the data may be corrupted and coherent download will be impossible. We don't have a problem with that, okay? Yes, yes you do, a big fucking problem. Not only can you not hold that amount of data in your head drive like they just said, but if you somehow could get all that information in there, there's the fact of the matter is something called synaptic seepage in this stupid fucking universe where the information turns into a physical material and leaks out on your brain like an overfed baby vomiting formula that could potentially poison and kill you, plus corrupt the data anyway. And if the music score is any indication, this rack of trench coats led by some guy with cybernetic coke spoon fingernail jewelry is bad news. Kind of disappointed he's not wearing a Hawaiian shirt. Why? Read the book. The suitcase with the specifically cut foam inserts for his roll of lifesavers and pack of smokes looks totally legit. Glad to see airport security in this universe is on par with our own. When the counter approaches zero, click on three frames off the TV. Any three. They'll meld with the data and I won't know what they are. That's a download code. Yeah, because as we saw, this machine was totally hooked up to the TV before. You get a hard copy. You fax one copy to your connection on the other side. When I get there, we feed in the code and download. Understand? What are they going to do once they get it? Swipe it across his face like a barcode reader at a supermarket? Oh, that one's cute. He really turned into a size queen for his next cyber thriller. When you press here. Who's the target? Scientists. Farmcom R&D people. Defectors. No! Hit me. They've gone to plaid. There's got to be a better way to get a brighter smile. Could you imagine that this turned out to be some sort of underground lemon party porn ring? A bunch of images of old people fucking had to go flashing past his eyes in order to record? 
I don't want to imagine that at all, actually. Oh, well, pff, you're no fun. The access code. <laughs> I can never get that kind of detail from my Game Boy printer. Mr. Smith? Is he communicating in Morse code? Where's the bathroom? What? The toilet. I have to poop, it's part of the process. Destroy the original! Fax the images to Newark. And open a window! Wait, they still rely on fax machines? The future! No time to take a shit. The rejects from Blade are getting closer. <sighs> oh, Jesus! Jesus, shit! I think they just stuck a couple of cameras in the bathroom and filmed Keanu's reaction to realizing he's in this movie. Water temperature is 17 degrees. As Johnny is done interpretive dancing with himself in the mirror and dabbing colder than freezing water on his face this time of the month, the Yakuza are at the hotel room door. Because fuck warning the group of people armed with weapons in the hotel room that there's someone at the door. Whoa, I hope he has a safety cap for that thing. Jerking off can get dangerous. So Asian Simon Belmont burns to the door with his flame whip and the Yakuza break in, opening fire on everyone inside the room. Nick from Pigstan decides to check out the open bathroom to see if anyone's hiding inside that needs a hand angel. Next time, knock, Baldy. Nobody heard any of that. After everyone's already shot up, Chun-Li here finally decides to come out from behind a pillar and tackle one of the shooters. Because using the machine gun that you had earlier is only for people that ring the fucking doorbell first, I guess. Doesn't matter, she's only here to serve as a distraction so Johnny can make a break for the access codes while wielding a towel rod. He broke off the wall like a tomahawk, but as he leaps out swinging, he comes face to face with Edward Filament Hands. Whoa, didn't you invent Pac-Man? And Moby rejoins the battle. Pac-Man on Atari sucked! Get him! Shinji tells the rest of the goons to run after Johnny when he notices one of the scientists, still alive, is in desperate need of a manicure. Uh, half off your next appointment? You! Where is he going? Where is he taking the data? Newark! Good job, guy. You could have said anywhere else, and this douchebag would have probably believed you. Back at the bottom floor of the hotel, we see the doors of the elevator open, and the bad guys get out and race across the lobby, but Johnny is nowhere to be seen. Why is Professor Hojo from Final Fantasy VII dressed like a slam poet? We get some fake early 90s industrial music that sounds like some wannabe Christian Whiteness Aryan reggae band as a few quick establishing shots of how much in disrepair Newark the story's rendition of Night Town is. After Johnny's plane lands, using one of his fake IDs, he goes through a security scan machine that has the ability to not just look into your body for foreign objects, but to turn your skin momentarily see-through, showing your tiny, badly rendered little skeleton inside your body. Implant detected. 
Scanning dyslexia prosthesis implant. Government approved. Warning, detected synaptic seepage. Neuro failure within 24 hours. Seek medical attention immediately. Thank you. Welcome to Newark. Welcome to Newark. Enjoy your complimentary skin count, sir. At Pharmacom headquarters, Shinji has already made it back, seemingly before Johnny somehow, as he's had time to change clothes. He's meeting with the big boss of Pharmacom Newark, Takahashi, played by Takashi Kitano, to discuss the failure on retrieving the stolen data while in Beijing. A horrific reminder of how picking your nose can go bad. The Pharmacom traders are dead. The courier, however, escaped with the data. He's on his way here to Newark. I didn't want to disturb you in your time of grief. It must be very difficult to lose an only child. Ooh, low blow, Shinji. Takahashi gets fed up with Shinji's bitchiness and demands that he relinquish the download code to him so he could personally oversee the capture. Somewhere in this shithole, Johnny's on a call in the back of a cab trying to figure out what happened to the job that went south in Beijing. Johnny boy. Johnny boy, my ass, what's the fucking score here? I'm way overloaded, man. You would not believe how much. I think he has an idea. You told me you got upgraded. Yeah, yeah, I did. I got the goods, Ralphie. Now I just want to get them out of my head. Did they get the code out? Don't worry. They said they can extract. Extract? Ex... What's going on, Ralphie? This feels like a blown deal, man. What? No! You say you have to get the data out. They are the only ones who can do it. There's no other choice. Trust me. I will tell the driver where to take you. Oh yeah, trust you. After all that, do you really think Johnny's gonna trust you? Even the most brain-dead... Yeah, sure. As we wander away from our densest wood main character for a bit, we enter the Drome, a place of business where Ralphie likes to hang out. We're introduced to our watered-down Molly Millions of the movie, Jane, a low-level bodyguard played by Dana Mayer, wearing a chainmail t-shirt. Toughened your nipples, didn't it? And a flesh mechanic slash doctor named Spider, played by Henry Rollins. Henry Rollins, this Henry Rollins. Cause I'm a liar! Yeah, that Henry Rollins. Best movie ever. Really? Well, probably not. I want to get you back to the shop for some tests. Hey, are you listening? No more playing, Doctor, remember? Uh, that's not what I meant. Right. Look at them. Apparently Jane is all pissy because she's being stepped over by everyone in the bodyguard game around town and she feels she's the best in the business, but isn't getting a fair shake. So she decides to look for work with Ralphie. Get out of here, bitch. <laughs> by looking for work, I mean smacking around the David Bowie impersonators known as the Magnetic Dog Sisters, hanging out at Ralphie's table, played by Tracy Tweed and Falconer Abraham. You're the best agent for bodyguards in town. I'm the fastest thing going now, Spider's jacked my system. Hold out your hand. Ralphie decides to give Jane a shot to prove her worth, tasking her to simply hold out her hand for a few moments, but even that proves to be too difficult, as she's been augmented with cheap implants and shakes like a cat shitting a peach seed. Cheap street implants. <laughs> you damaged goods, bitch. I wouldn't talk, Xerxes. You don't look exactly mint in box. Spider-Man jacked you up, all right. Jacked her up so tight she shakes. I cannot use you, not for muscle. Ever considered something a little less actively physical? Like on your back, babe? Ah, ooh, on your knees. Maybe try out for first base on the Baltimore Orioles? I'll get it, Gabriel V. Then I'm coming back for you. Sure. 
No. You're no fun. Johnny finally arrives at his destination, what looks like a garbage-filled industrial area. Of course! An old abandoned part of the city. Perfect! Seems like a legit place to be sent to in the middle of the night when you need brain surgery. Standing on top of the building, we meet Dog and Toad. Yo, J-Bone. Excuse me, J-Bone and Toad, a pair of low techs hanging out in this shithole for basically no reason other than to later interact with the lead character. What you clocking, man? Some suit out from the city. What for? I don't know. Suits don't come out here. Wait a minute, isn't that Ice-T? Yeah, so? Wasn't he ransom note face back at the hotel telling Johnny to snatch back his brain? How come he doesn't recognize him anymore? Oh, I see where you're confused. You see, the reason why is... At that moment, he began a very long-winded and poorly written joke that for some reason had that little kid from Angels in the Outfield saying, It could happen. And I'm not sure why. It was so bad. Oh my god. I'm pretty sure I died halfway through it, and this is some sort of purgatory. What have I done to deserve this? Why do I have to be the one to suffer through these things? Why did I open my big fat mouth? Why? Why? Or maybe it was just bad writing. Johnny wanders around the junk piles for a bit before noticing an ominous looking figure in a long jacket and hat slink off into a building across the street. But having been fucked over so many times tonight, he decides to play it safe and... Walk right in after him. You're Johnny? Am I? I sure hope so. No, seriously, I'm dumb as fuck. I don't remember. Johnny decides to err on the side of caution by pulling a sticky bomb out of his butt and casually strapping it to the wall of the only exit he knows this building to contain. You know, in case he wants to blow himself up or seal off any known way of escape out of this obvious knot trap he's walking into. We've got to stop meeting like this. Baldy. Doctor, we'll see you now. Oh look, it's a trap! How utterly pre What the fuck is wrong with you? You lied. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you came out from behind the table after I kicked the shit out of your buddy. Didn't see that coming. Time to die. Time. What the fuck? Oh, bomb shrapnel killed them both. Or everyone is perfectly fine from the blast, having only been a few feet away. What? Johnny narrowly escapes the two assassins and flees down the street as quick as he can. Or hides behind some trash only ten feet from the door. Oh, come on! Here's Baldy! We've got all night, asshole! Oh, God, I hope not. Yeah, the toad, I say shut up. While Johnny's struggling to stay alive, J-Bone and Toad are up on the fucking roof fighting over who gets to watch him take a bullet through the binoculars. But as Johnny goes to trick Baldy by tossing a rock and making noise to send him looking in the other direction, Toad slips on a loose brick, alarming Baldy of their presence above. Oh, pff, dude, hacks, using aimbot. Oh no, he killed the guy 6 9 stole his likeness from! Too small, throw him back. Good time to come down and check on your friend when the guy that just killed him is standing right there with a gun. But hey, that's just me. I'm kinda cautious when it comes to being shot and beheaded by fucking psychopaths. You weren't on the menu, but I want you to do something for me. Do? Yes? Say bye. Just as we think our hero is safe for the moment, Laszlo appears from the warehouse and aims his gun at the two. Hold it right there. <laughs> uh. 
And don't forget to pick up your very own I could be shooting you right now, but I'd rather laugh like an idiot and die with a stupid look on my face t-shirt at our Spreadshirt page. Whoa! Link in the description below. No. Who made this gun, Lego? You tooling up for an evening of this stuff, huh? Tool is the key word here. As long as you understand one thing. We're even. I don't know you shit. Ah! My carpal tunnel! Who are you? I'm J-Bone. I run heaven. Look, a raccoon! The low-tech headquarters. Good job turning your back on someone you're not sure of enough that you have to point a gun at. Gone like a fart in the wind. Easy as a pie, easy as a pie. Ah, cherry pie then. Fuck. They were waiting for me, Ralphie. Two big nasty men. Johnny, please, let me explain. Johnny! I was gonna get you strippers, but assassins were so much cheaper. Don't blame me, blame the economy. This been a screw up! <laughs> You're dead, you don't get this batch of product out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> NOT ON THE HEAD! Child Protective Services will see the bruises! As Johnny is easily taken out by the transvestite in a tinfoil tube top, we cut to Viking Marge Simpson as she belts out a few notes on stage while Jane is watching from the bar, still steaming about the initial encounter with Ralphie and his flunkies when she notices them acting suspicious, carrying a body into the back. As opposed to inconspicuously carrying a body? Sometimes you really scare me. Okay, give me my shirt. Come on. Smells like a beaver dam in here. <gasps> Senator Mark Warner, what are you doing in here? Apparently having done this before, Jane makes her way into the bathroom and uses the toilet to lift herself into the ceiling's crawl space so she can spy on Ralphie and the Wachowskis in the back room as they stand over Johnny, tied to a plastic wrapped table. Beer pong gets interesting in the future. How are you feeling, Johnny? Would they upload Ralphie? The goddamn Library of Congress. Feels like my brain's gonna explode. I think your friend here, he can take care of that. Oh shit. Uh, hey, that crack about Pac-Man earlier was just a joke. Put it here beside the table. Can we talk about this? Talk? Seeing as Johnny has no way out of this predicament, he tries bargaining for his life, but Shinji is too much of a bloodthirsty dick to let that happen. He's got his finger laser for a reason, and he's not about to let that go to waste. Somebody's getting singed. These days, you see... Dead men can tell tales. There's gotta be a way to work this out! There is. That looks like a sharpened pipe snake. What the fuck is going on? I've been asking that since I got here. I slid this fucking soap, bitch. So? Other guy gonna cut his whole head off. Jane, Jane, what say we pay you for a night's work and you just walk I'll away? I'll pay you 20 grand. You wouldn't believe the shit you had. 50. Deal. Wait a minute, why did Scary Spice here pull the knife away from Johnny's neck? What? Look! Deal. Your mama took the knife away for no reason. Just because Jane agreed to rescue Johnny doesn't make your mama's threat of cutting his throat any less important. If anything, it's even more important to keep the blade on Johnny since Jane now has a reason to keep him alive. If we don't let some of these go, we're gonna be here all day. Hmm. So Johnny gets free and springs off the table, grabbing his gun conveniently left next to him, using it to keep Shinji and Ralphie covered as Jane hucks one of her throwing spikes into a random guard's forehead before kicking the shit out of Pretty for a bit. Yeah, I got the gun. Let's go. Time to go! Oh, what? What happened? 
Are they done? Yeah. Um, found those gummy bears. Johnny and Jane back out of the room, locking everyone inside. Shinji tries using his yo-yo of death to get at them through the gate, but fails. You could have fucking killed me! Run away! A few minutes into Johnny Mnemonic and chill when he gives you that look. Ah! What are you doing? Acting, what are you doing? Bet Johnny's glad Jane's here. She can rescue him from all the standing around in the open he does. The two groups exchange a bit of gunfire before Johnny's gun jams, and they have to take off through the poop smoke filled alleyway to hide. In here. Close behind, Shinji and Pretty wander in with guns drawn, but are met with a dead end and animal noises coming from the surrounding area. It's Lennis the Penis! What? Not all these are gold? Holy shit, it's a tribe of Fiddler on the Roof performers! Shinji's backup arrives, but it's not enough to stop the amount of low techs there. J-Bone orders Johnny and Jane out the back way through the sewers while they deal with holding the Yakuza there. We'll find you again! Count on it! I have to get online. Must be somebody I can talk to. Square this. Now safe for the moment, Jane asks about the payment Johnny had promised her earlier. Time I see the color, right? Right. Yeah, sure. Let me just reach in my ass. Hold on. Hold on. Holy shit, I found five bucks! Johnny tries to brush off Jane, telling her that he'll transfer the money he promised if she shows him the way out, but not being a complete idiot, she decides to tag along for a while until he gets his finances straightened out. Hey, poke around in there, dude. I think I feel a 20. No. Since she's going to be around for a while, having never heard of a mnemonic carrier before, she asks how Johnny does what he does. I can carry nearly 80 gigs of data in my head. 160 if I use a doubler. Trouble is, somebody's stuck in a lot more than that, and I don't know how to get it back out. Okay, so wait a minute, wait a minute. You're a smuggler? In your head? Yeah. <laughs> ah! Space babies! Oh, what's wrong? <laughs> uh, 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 come here, sit down, sit down. Oh man, you are fucked up severe. Oh yeah, the second time he shined that bright ass light in his eyes is totally gonna make it all better. At Pharmacom Newark, we get a shot of Takahashi's Yakuza tats that look like someone decided to iron on an Ed Hardy shirt while it was still attached to his back, as he listens to a video of his deceased daughter in the background. A voice overtakes the audio and the feed is interrupted by a mysterious woman played by Barbara Sokoa, looking like a live-action Smurfette playing the Virgin Mary, warning Takahashi about his company, trying to screw him over because they feel he's lost his purpose in life when his daughter died. But before she could tell him any more, they're listening. They're everywhere. What the fuck? Did she just turn into Lily Von Stoop from Blazing Saddles? It's true. It's true. It's true. Ah, backstory. Just my stuff. Mace, throwing spikes, a grenade. Everything a girl needs. That's kinda hot. Damn right. I told you I was in a hurry. I'm a dead man if I don't get this out of my head. Whoa! Now Johnny's metal for life! 
Apparently the seepage has started affecting his motor skills enough to cripple the use of Johnny's right hand. So back to walking the tracks they go as Jane continues to ask stupid questions about Johnny's profession. So how do you fit all that shit in your head anyway? Must have been pretty good at memorizing, huh? Johnny finally obliges her curiosity a bit, telling her that he had the part of his brain that stored long-term memory cut out to make room for the hard drive. But Jane can't seem to grasp why he'd do that. Your childhood. Really? I needed the space for the job. We well, got parents and stuff? You got parents and stuff? Rawr. Yeah. Once. But I haven't seen them in years. Yeah. Anyways, I don't think about it much, okay? In the arms of the angel, fly away. Well, what do you think about? When you're alone. I think I want to get out of this rat hole. I want to get online. I need a computer. Johnny gets his wish as they break into some back room set dressed with shelves and vague boxes, aka Crazy Bob's computer store, and they begin searching for a viable terminal to get online. I need a Sinologic 60, Sogo 7 data gloves, a GPL stealth module, one Verdine intelligent translator. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Meanwhile, Shinji is driving around town, beginning a trace on Johnny's movements. He'll use his connections on the net. Narrow the bandwidth. Go low rent. Good timing! Yeah, it's here. Fax buffer selected. Part of it's here in the buffer of their fax modem. Nothing but a name. Dr. Alka. Nothing came through. Shit. Jane starts getting a bad feeling and wants to leave, but Johnny decides to waste more time screwing around to chat with his friend Strike that might be able to locate Dr. 80's porn name. Having been online for too long, Shinji's team traces Johnny to the computer shop and is on their way. He locked on him. He's using a Sinologic 16 GPL stealth module. Crazy Bob's computer shop, 5326 Sutton Plaza, back room. Blood type O positive, he's wearing a cologne that's too strong, kind of minty, really likes spaghetti with extra sauce, has the cutest little mole on his inner left thigh. Initiate the virus. Well, hello there. I don't believe we've been properly introduced. Access denied. Come on, let me in! Access granted. Get off my board. Oh! Oh, God. Ow! <laughs> the talking Photoshop filter from hell decides to tell Johnny to split, but he isn't going anywhere without answers. I don't owe you that much. I could crash you from here, man. Wipe out your entire fucking board. Johnny, don't. That's my livelihood. And stop bullshitting me! Apparently that's enough for him to spill the beans about what he's heard so far, telling Johnny that they stuck in a bunch of sensitive Pharmacom data and now they want it back. But before Johnny can get anything else, that's when the virus hits. Pharmacom? Yeah. They put a virus on So what's the point of sending them a virus? The point? Yeah, why would they initiate the virus if all it was going to do was alert them to being tracked and possibly captured? The point. Outside, Jane spots a couple of cars rolling up to the store and ducks back inside to get Johnny, just as the blue chick from before appears into his visor. 
Johnny. Hurry, Johnny. They're coming. Who the hell are you? Gotta go now. <laughs> This. What if that were just some store employees that were coming to work the night shift? Have you ever dealt with computer store employees? Yeah, you're right. Back at Pharmacom Newark, Takahashi learns of Sinji's failure and decides to enlist the help of a hitman named Carl, played by... Holy shit, is that Dolph Lundgren with hair extensions? I don't have to tell you just how awesome it is every time this guy shows up in a film. Countless critics and moviegoers have come to know this giant hunk of blonde beef as one of the greatest things to appear in bad movies since the credits. Takahashi tells Carl that he is in need of his special services to find Johnny. You need someone brought to Jesus? Or to you. Best line in the movie, hands down. Carl, do not fail me. Somewhere in a Google micro kitchen, Johnny rifles through Jane's bag like an asshole. What are you, what are you doing? Should he really be handling her bag like that? She's been known to have grenades and shit. Do you really care if that actually happens? So Johnny grabs Jane's phone card and the device he stole from Crazy Bob's computers to hack the shielded line of a Pharmacom security officer played by Douglas O'Keefe. This is an unlisted number. How did you get it? I pushed the pound button a bunch of times. Hacker man. He's the most powerful hacker of all time. Johnny and the Pharmacom security officer discuss meeting someplace to get the data out of Johnny's head, and he can walk free, but Jane doesn't seem to share the same trust Johnny does. You're crazy, man. They're gonna chop your fucking head off. No. They'll negotiate. They're corporate. Suppose the Yakuza. 401k, healthcare, golden katana retirement package. Hey, isn't that a little racist? Who cares? Johnny, sensing Jane isn't down with the clown, tells her to hang back and he'll send her the money once everything is squared away with Pharmacom. But Jane insists they're just trying to trick him again. I'd listen to her, dude, because your track record hasn't been too good when it comes to trustworthy people. Listen. I know this guy's Spider. He used to be a doctor. He could help you. He could fix your... Hey, what's with you? I just got water in my ear. Apparently Jane isn't messing around as she starts showing signs of the black shakes. So Johnny drags her over and lays her down on a pile of garbage before he goes to walk off to make his meeting. Wait, what? What? Okay, he's in the middle of being hunted and he has a bit of a time issue with that really sketch meeting he has to get to. Not to mention his head is about to explode or something. So I could see him being a little bit dismissive and cranky when it comes time to a schedule, but to just drop her ass off in a garbage pile and walk away is fucking ridiculous. I mean, she saved his ass before Ralphie and his goons could chop off his head at the bar, stopped multiple attacks from the Yakuza, and got the low techs involved in protecting their escape. And this dude is really going to just leave her fidgeting around to die in some trash pile? We're supposed to be rooting this for this turd? Yeah. I was seeing you had a little trouble reading all that off the script. You good? All right. I don't know how we switched hats. Here, have your shit back. Thank you. Anyway. Johnny decides he can't just leave her there wiggling around on the ground in the garbage. He has to take her to Spider. So they take a taxi over to the shop in another part of this shithole city. Expect 
elected, then you're not invited. So fuck off, okay? My new away message. It's Jade! She says you know her. Get down here, man! She's sick! Was he just right behind the door? Look, I gotta run. Shut up. Give me that muscle relaxant over there, the red one. It's NAS, right? Yeah, the black shake. Like half the people on the planet. Let me tell you something so you get this straight. It's not my work that got her this way. My work is clean. Cool, bro. I don't remember asking for an explanation. So what does cause it? What causes it? The world causes it. This causes it. This causes it. This causes it. Information overload. All the electronics around you poisoning the airwaves. Technological fucking civilization. But we still have all this shit because we can't live without it. Let me do my work. His work doesn't cause NAS, but all the machines that he uses for his work do? What kind of stupid shit logic is that? What kind of stupid shit? This kind of stupid shit. This kind of stupid shit. This kind of stupid shit! Stupid shit overload! All this stupid shit shitting on our fucking eyeballs! Shitological fucking civilization shit! That didn't even make sense. But we have all this shit! Because we can't review without it. Let me do my work. <sighs> Meanwhile, a couple of low techs are keeping watch on a rooftop where they spot Carl, the street preacher, wandering around the streets in search for Johnny. Relaying their findings to J-Bone sitting in a low tech headquarters through Binocchio Vision so he can give a little exposition speech about how Carl isn't a real preacher and is too dangerous to follow because he'll kill anyone just to keep himself jacked with implants. And speaking of exposition, back at Pharmacom, Takahashi has his secretary read from the big book of exposition on some information she found about the blue woman he saw earlier hacking into the monitor in his office. Died. Six years ago. She was imprinted to Pharmacom's neural net installation in Zurich prior to onset of morbidity. Imprinted? Uh, her neural net persona has Swiss citizenship under the artificial intelligence laws of 2006. She advises the current board from this state of being. Bodega. Ooh, that's so stupid. So Johnny goes screwing around with Spider's equipment and logs into Pharmacom, but before he can access anything of any importance, Anna appears like a psycho ex-girlfriend. Johnny. I'm pregnant. Ooh, now that's frightening. What are you doing? Calm down, Henry Royd Rage. Nobody found your furry porn. Don't touch anything. Who the fuck are you anyway? Johnny. Johnny who? Just Johnny. Oh, you know, like Fabio, or Madonna, or Spider. Ah, bang my shit on the table. It looks like a full-service shop here. How are you on brain implants? Silicon implants, neural overlays, memory augmentation. We don't get much of that out here in Newark, just Johnny. Kind of upscale for us, you know? Got mine in Singapore. Oh, yeah? What's your deal, Just Johnny? I got this problem. Up here. I got nothing. Okay. Back at the bar where everyone wants your brain, the trail has led Carl to the friendly bionic bartender, Hooky, as he cleans up after hours. For all the tables are full of vomit and filthiness, so that there is no place clean. You should have seen it before. Isaiah. Isaiah? Mine's Hooky. Hey there, Isaiah. You must not be from around here, because this isn't exactly how you shake it. <laughs> You leave Hooky alone! All he did was give people drinks and be a really nice character, and you had to go and freeze his shitty robot hand with your stupid Cylon helmet full of dry ice! The girl 
The girl that took Ralphie's boy out of the back room? <laughs> Who is she? You expect me to remember half the shit? Yeah! Carl smashes Hookie's hand into a gelato with his favorite weapon from Clue and reveals its delicious candy center. But that was only the beginning of what's in store. Now on to his main weapon, the Jesus Christ of Latter-day Shank. Where? Back over at Spider's, Jane is getting some electrolysis done with a car battery jumper while Johnny is tanning his head as a short CGI video of what would be happening if this thing actually worked plays on the monitor that Spider is trying to look impressed by. Some serious shoehorning to get that in there. It must be hurting like hell. Only when I think, so not very often. I got 320 gigs in here. Yeah? What is it exactly? What kind of stuff? I haven't got a clue. And I don't have a download code either. No, wait, 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 hold on, wait. Why did Johnny's head drive move from the top right hand side of his head when he was in the security scan machine in Newark to the back of his head in this scan, but he jacks in behind his right ear? Oh, that's because... As Johnny and Spider get acquainted, Jane gets up from her nap and notices Spider combing Johnny's head for ticks. Spider commends her for bringing Johnny to his shop for help, but he seems more worried about extracting the product from his head intact than saving him. What? I don't know if the product would be coherent. Fuck the product! Johnny figures since Spider has medical knowledge and maybe he'll know where to find Dr. Alcum because all doctors know each other and be able to get information there, but Spider seems to want to play dumb. Maybe? Where is he? I said maybe! Why do you want to see him? Oh, come on, Spider. Just tell me where to go. All right, I'll drive you. Right. They all hop into Spider's Free Candy Express and head down the street, but no sooner do they leave the shop when Crazy Carl appears from the shadows to stop them. Hold, sinners! Fuck! Do you have time to talk about our Lord and... Who the fuck was that? Whoever he was still managed to stick a pamphlet under the wiper. Onward they go to their destination as Roadkill Carl is left in the dust, apparently barely phased by the big delivery truck running his ass over. Where are we? You'll see. I'm still not sure which Walmart this is. Yeah, they all really do look alike, don't they? You're the charts, Doctor. Where's Dr. Alcum? Yeah, because fuck all these patients that can be spasming their guts out their butts right now. He needs to figure out what you did to get yourself into this situation and fix it. So instead of taking the chart back and whacking Johnny across the face with it for being grabby, Spider tells him exactly what he should have told him since the beginning. Instead of driving all around town running people over. The Dr. Alcum isn't real. Dr. Alcum is a name used in hospitals when we got a major problem and don't want to spook the patients. What? Dr. Alcum to Ward 7 and we drop everything and haul ass to wherever. Usually means we got a crazy, somebody violent. But I saw it on a fax buffer. That fax was meant for us. Who's us? It would be more dramatic if I told you over here. Who's us? The NAS underground. People keep this place going. People like me. Oh, would us be the same people that thought it was a good idea to not just make a backup plan if their data heist went south? Would us be the same people that used a bunch of wimpy ass scientists and inexperienced gunmen to try and save millions of people from a deadly disease? <laughs> I mean, it's smuggling like not that, that cure, big of a kept deal. secret by an evil corporation that could potentially bankrupt their organization if it ever got out. Or Calm us down, being the dude, same going... idiots that thought Newark, a city where a Pharmacom building run by Yakuza was located, would be a great place to send our courier to? The same fucking dumbasses that never seemed to send out a search party to find the big medical breakthrough in history when realizing <laughs> their team fun. in Beijing was wiped out and nothing came through on the facts? It's that fun. us? 
This was a series of gradually stupider moves from stupid people in a stupid situation that seemed way too important to half-ass. Johnny hops on the table and gets plugged into the machines in hopes Spider can crack the lock with some decryption codes, but no luck. Fuck! No dice? No, but I can get it out. How? The general anesthetic, a cranial drill, and a pair of forceps. And I could die too, right? Panning shots are fun. It's gonna kill you anyway when it ruptures. I take it out, you'll probably survive. You'll probably lose some fine motor skills. You might not be able to remember anything for more than three minutes at a time. Fuck that! Let me tell you something. Let's just start with what you got in there and what it's worth. What it's worth to the world. You're carrying the cure for NAS. What the fuck? You're telling me I got Pharmacom's complete R&D on their cure for nerve attenuation syndrome, plus the records of the field trials to prove that it works. And it really works. You mean like real cure? They could have you straightened out in three weeks, Janie. You and everybody else. All I know is that whatever's in my head is worth a lot of money. Why should I trust you? You're supposed to be my bodyguard here. Bodyguard. You're not walking out of here. Not with that cure in your head. That cure is mine! Spider-Man! <laughs> the stick smells like old lube and sandwich meat. Behold your savior! Jesus resurrected in a dumpster! That's the one you should have grabbed at. Out of the way, harlot! I want the boy! I don't know, kicking him in the face seems to work pretty good. Maybe you should just get out of the way and let him... Or sacrifice yourself, that works too. It's really a shame there's nobody around to help, like a busy hospital full of other staff with an earshot, literally right behind a thin plastic tarp, would be super nice right about now. Who's Jones? He's that guy who fucks your mother. As Johnny and Jane hightail it out of there in Spider's shitbox, Johnny FaceTimes the Pharmacom security officer and reschedules the meet at the bridge, unaware that the security officer has already been taken care of for his failure and has been turned into a CGI puppet controlled by Takahashi. Listen to me, Takahashi, before it's too late. You're running out of time. He's carrying the- Off my dick, you blue bitch. I'm trying to get my sword wet. At the bridge, Johnny tries to get the attention of the guards on duty above, played by Michael Miranda. And a dog with NAS, also known as Coyote Shivers, the same guy that created the iconic intro song to the hit 80s Canadian skit comedy show, The Kids in the Hall. And that's it, moving on. Because it's about the feeling, right? What's up? Wind, maybe. Hey! No matter how loud Johnny gets, the two can't seem to hear him literally yelling right below them. While they wait, Johnny decides to stir up some small talk with Jane about Jones, the name he heard Spider mention at the hospital. According to Jane, Jones was in the Navy and someone that's very similar to Johnny in a way. You know, they, um, they put a lot of stuff in his head, kind of like, like you. But yeah, like memory augments? No, more like packing material and a place to put your hand. Right there, man. It's by the van. That should do it. Annoy the piss out of them until you get someone's attention. The squeaky wheel gets the grease.
What the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going on? I've been asking that since I got here. You know, all my life, I've been careful to stay in my own corner. Looking out for number one, no complications. Number one's not the problem, it's when number two comes out of nowhere. That's the problem. Now suddenly, I'm responsible for the entire fucking world. And everybody and his mother is trying to kill me if, if, my head doesn't blow up first. Maybe it's not just about you anymore. Oh, shit. Listen. You listen to me. You see that city over there? That's where I'm supposed to be. Not down here with the dogs and the garbage and the fucking last month's newspapers blowing back and forth! I've had it with them! Wait, what the fuck did we do? I've had it with you! I've had it with all this! I want room service! I want the club sandwich. I want the cold Mexican beer. I want a $10,000 a night hooker. I want my shirts laundered. Like they do at the Imperial Hotel. In Tokyo. After that little temper tantrum, here comes Morpheus with a Nebuchadnezzar to claw game Neo out. I mean, here comes J Bone on his descending lawsuit to see what all the commotion's about downstairs. We're gonna see Jones. Spider sent us. Where's Spider? He's dead. Yep, totally dead. Not in there, earlier. At the hospital. Spider sent you. Come on. I guess that works. No, how did he die? Or, huh, that sucks. Just, okay, come on in. You could totally be the ones that murdered. Oh, the acid's finally kicking in. Come on. Keep it together. Who else wants to play Tetris Blast? Come on. The group ascends into heaven, and Johnny gets handed off like a joint at a Willie Nelson concert through either the bowels of the bridge or a really unsafe fun center for adults. Before we get anywhere interesting, Johnny passes out from the pain, and we get a useless jump cut of Takahashi gearing up for a raid back at Pharmacom. He's on his way, sir. My helicopter. It's waiting, sir. Someone's Super 8 family videos pop up, and then we're back to Johnny, unconscious in a chair, as Jane kneels down by his side to check on him. You okay? I saw... I almost saw... as if it wasn't... a memory. Memories are so hot. Remember when you were going to leave me in the garbage because I was dying a few scenes ago? That memory really turns me on right now. What is it with this chick and falling for assholes named Johnny? <clears throat> we have a room especially for that. One more wouldn't hurt, cockblock. It's time to meet Jones. We built heaven completely out of straight world junk. All hauled up here piece by piece. Ikea. Long live the home. We work with Spider and his people and anybody else who's fighting the system. We out shit for him. What do you mean, out? The opposite of in? Duh. Got it! Damn water beetles. Heaven. Heart and soul.
Hey, where's the reverberating trampoline floor of death? The what? Forget it. Bounced off the satellites that Jones hacks for us. The way the Navy got him hooked up, he cuts through hard encryption like a knife cuts through butter. Codebreaker. Good. Can't wait to meet him. Right this way. We finally get to meet the man himself, the mysterious, unstoppable hacker that can break into anything. Jones. Is he standing behind Robocarp? Man, the Weapon X program turned to shit when Logan left. It's a fish. You wanna see fish, motherfucker? How about I beam the entire library of Bill Dance videos into your brain, asshole? He's a friend. He's a friend, sailor. Yeah, go shoot up and fuck off, flipper. This was Spider's best bet? Hey, one thing Spider wasn't was stupid. Jones has set up the sample software from enemy subs. Infrasound scan. Right through the hull. That's not how anything works. Down in the junkyard, Shinji and company finally arrive, gearing up for battle with bazookas and bike helmets. Safety first when noob tubing. Uh, sir, I don't think that helmet fits your... You don't know what you're talking about. But, sir, it's fine. Is that an HTC Vive attached to an electric chair? We'll try to get you out in time. Wait a minute. Have you done this before? As the fish? How dangerous is this? Just keep your head still. Move around too much. Could microwave your frontal lobe. Oh, so it is a Vive. Give me what you got in the download codes. Oh, hey, by the way, those guys that want this, they're supposed to be on the way here soon, so maybe you should have a... No? Okay. I'm sure it'll be fine. Do you think they use standard grappling hooks or Phillips? Just Johnny, you have been found guilty of being a tool and sentenced to death by Virtual Boy. Roll on one. Burn an unrendered hell, land mollusk! Inputting first image. Set up the broadcast antennas. Meanwhile, Takahashi is flying outside in a loud-ass helicopter. Figured I'd mention it since nobody else seems to notice it at all. Oh, hold on. I'm glad we didn't start yet. I found that piece that protects- No. Oh, never mind. I'm sure it'll be fine. Johnny enters the Matrix and gets turned into a virtual fence or some silly shit. While back in the real world, across heaven, Shinji and his team are now on the upper platform, edging closer to take down a couple of sentries guarding the faci- the same incompetent tards that nearly screwed over the planet when they almost crushed Johnny with an exploding Volkswagen? Are we supposed to be rooting for the bad guys now, movie? You haven't been? Hey, buddy. He died as he lived. Dumb as hell. Ah, I'm incredibly stupid and won't just simply get out of the way even though I have enough time to almost finish this entire set dead. AT&T, mobilizing your death. Motherfucker! Yakuza Bazooka! Station, y'all know the drill. Yep, first explosion we ignore, second explosion we actually do something about. Ah, uh, my frontal lobes! I hope it's a brain tumor. What did you get? We didn't get it. Enzite, the once daily tablet for natural male enhancements. The only way left is to hack your own brain and then loop it through John. That made me moist. <laughs> Like with any money shot, it's best to top it off with a stare into the camera. I was almost there. I could 
can feel it starting to... What? Come on, just one little adjective, we'll have a whole sentence here. Mr. Smith? Farmer Cobb? Not really. You can't shoot me. Not in the head. Shooting like that, I'd be surprised if you hit anything. So Johnny and Takahashi slow dance for a moment as Takahashi whips out his sword and they find their mark on the floor for the next shot. Takahashi! Do you know what this man is carrying in his head? Nothing! Absolutely nothing! Stupid! You're so stupid! He's carrying the cure for MAS. Your daughter died to protect Farmacom's property. Blah, blah, blah. Cure, blah, blah, blah. Backstory, blah, blah. Run, Johnny! He's busy staring at the blue bitch. Run! Why are you fucking standing around? Let your daughter die. I probably should have run for it, huh? Oh shit, Takahashi's down and Shinji has captured Jin. Raise your chin. Let's make this clean. You can just shoot him in the chest and then... Or you can just let him get away. That works too, I guess. Just spin around and hold Jane hostage or something. He's obviously with her. I mean, you took the time to capture her. Do something with that. You know he won't. God damn it! Well, Shinji and Johnny chase each other around playing grab ass, and Jane is taking nine years to beat up one guard, heavens burning down around them. Johnny ends up trapping himself because he doesn't want to cross the shittily made catwalk, giving Shinji time to catch up and block his way back. I'm done. Hey, what the hell are you? <sighs> Have you ever seen something so stupid and ridiculous that you have to take a moment to really think about what the impact of being subjected to its stupidity has really done to your life? That face. That stupid fucking face. I don't think I'll ever be the same again. The world has this dirty hue that wasn't there before I started to watch this stupid fucking movie. It's cold now. Everything feels wrong. And, oh, broke your cherry. What? It took me three Steven Seagal movies in a row to get to where you are right now. Everyone has a different tolerance level. Yours just happens to be right here. In the shape of Keanu Reeves' dumb fucking face. But don't worry, it happens to everyone. It'll pass. Tell you what, you go get some fresh air and I'll finish the review. How about that? Thank you. You were always a true friend. I'm gonna go sit on the curb or something. Pussy. So Johnny decides to do this to coax Shinji to attack. And when he does, they both eat shit into a shipping container that tips up and flips him out the back. Did you just snort at me? If I fall, you don't get the head, right? If you lose the head, you're fucked! Or the hard drive will be perfectly fine and he'll just come snatch your corpse out of the water when he gets down there. Well, that was fucking stupid.
pull my finger. And just like that, the villains have been defeated. Or have they? Jesus, child. Jesus time. Jesus time. I wonder if he needs some fucking company out there. <laughs> Try again, but give it a little more power behind your swing and use the sharp... Or drop it, whatever. So Takahashi, dying from the many gunshot wounds Shinji gave him, hands Johnny the rest of the code. The last ditch effort to redeem himself before he dies. Meanwhile, back at the domestic dispute, Carl is about to Jesus time Jane when he's suddenly knocked to the ground by a flying Johnny, but quickly lays him out with the holiest of bitch slaps. <laughs> Carl is about to deliver the final blow to Johnny, but Jane and Jones think otherwise. He's made you the vessel of his mercy as I am the vessel of his wrath. Fish? Jones. Fish. Spot of Satan! Fish! Never put your priest in the microwave. Oven use only. Perfect. Piece of shit. Hook me up. I need drugs. Here's a 20. The second image. Get the power up! Everyone scrambles to fix what was destroyed from the attack and get Johnny into the seat to go back into the mainframe. But as they restore the power, Anna appears to Johnny one last time. Johnny. The dolphin can take you into the dad. Find the third image. I knew their secret. The image. The company has forgotten for me. Now they erase me. Burn me out of the mainframes. One memory after another. How very kind of them. If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and try again. Look, we're gonna do this download. We gotta do it now. We're out of power. Feeling that this is the finale, Johnny starts getting all sentimental, so he gives a little window love to Jones before getting a last minute warning from J-Bone. Okay, let's do this. Watch your ass, man. No telling what defense this Pharmacon stuck in there. Probably got virus programs. You ready? Loop it. Guess that's a yes. Johnny then straps himself back into Old Smokey, sharing one last touch between him and Jane. I couldn't find a tissue, so here's a booger for good luck. J-Bone walks off to play DJ Download and prep the world for the cure. Listen up, world. This is the last blast from Low Tech World Headquarters. And believe this, we're going out with a bang, baby. So get your VCRs ready, because we got what you need. We got the cure to NAS. 
That's right, the cure to the black shakes, and it's coming to you live from the labs up at Pharmacom. And believe this, they did not want you to get this information. So here it is, coming at you, low-tech style. Hit me. I like it rough. <laughs> He's on his way in. Thank you, Captain Exposition. So, Johnny forms out of the back of the first image looking like a lawnmower man, wearing the same gloves from Crazy Bob's computers for some reason. I don't know, looked cool. I guess that's why they brought him back. Unauthorized interface attempt. Is it me or did that warning just have a southern drawl? Johnny turns himself into a red vine licorice rope and shoots through the mainframe at top speed before smashing into bits on the platform below. Again, why? I don't know. Final warning. Initiating virus program. A rabbit is in the administration system. Send a flu shot. Rabbit, flu shot, someone talk to me. While a flat screen TV from the Fortress of Sauron attacks, Johnny copy and pastes himself. Jones shows up like a velvet poster from a smoke shop as Johnny performs cross slash, then yanks off a hunk of the virus. Loop it. What the fuck does that mean? Jones shoots his triangle Echo of the Dolphin Ray at Wee Johnny, making him realize the third image of the code is of Anna. So Johnny headbutts it and starts the download. Because that's how hacking works. Get ready. Send it out. Initiating download. Download starts appearing on the monitors around the room and on television sets all around the world. Everyone is getting the information that will save millions of lives. Fush. After all the information that's been downloaded and sent out, Johnny ge gets his memories back? Flying fuck did Johnny just get his memories back? I don't know. They were cut out of his brain, or so I thought, to make room for the device. Or at least made inaccessible due to surgery. How is this fucking possible? Because Hollywood's an asshole, that's why. Johnny slumps out of the helmet like he just blew his load, and they all notice that something's going on outside the window. Pharmacom is on fire. The end. So that was Johnny Mnemonic, the 1995 cyberpunk thrill ride written by William De Just garbage. Get that out of here. So that was Johnny Mnemonic, the 1985 cyberpunk box office bomb written by William Gibson and directed by Robert Longo. 
and I fucking loved it. Seriously, when this movie came out, I was about 11 or 12. Never caught it in theaters, but when it came out on home video and I happened to catch it at my local blockbuster, I was fucking hooked. This was one of my favorite movies then, and is still one of my favorite movies now. I may have joked around and talked shit through this entire thing, poked holes in its logic, and basically bashed the hell out of everything I could think of as it came to me while I was sitting here, but that trash talking and nitpicking, the hair pulling and name calling, the seething moments of anger and the near suicidal moments to purge myself of the evil crawling through my veins, all came from a place of love and respect for this piece of art. It's not a guilty pleasure, it's a hidden gem that the mass public never took the time to appreciate for its dark gritty imagery of a neo-dystopian future world, the cheesiness from the dialogue from some of the biggest stars in Hollywood at the time had to repeat, the playful inadequacies of the camera work that made it feel like it was at least tried to be something new and different. Trying and failing, but definitely trying nonetheless. Despite its obvious flaws of having an inexperienced director and how deep the studio apparently stuck their hand in Longo's butthole like a community theater hand puppet to make him do what they wanted, this movie is a tribute, a masterpiece to the inability of compromise. Originally, Longo's idea was to raise $2 million and create a black and white film very close to the original short story, in the likes of Alphaville, a 1965 sci-fi mystery created by Jean-Luc Goddard, and as artistic and edgy as that sounds, Thank fucking God that didn't happen. Yeah, it might have been a better movie as far as creative vision goes, but nobody would have gone to see it. Nobody. Hell, nobody went and saw this film and it had major actors in color. On $2 million, who knows who they would have gotten to act in this? Certainly nobody here. Maybe that would have been for the best? My point is, it was the mid-90s, the cyberpunk era was starting to reach the mass public due to the induction of the internet into society, and home computers were becoming affordable items that didn't cost much of a fortune. Johnny Mnemonic was to be at the forefront of this resurgent trend and in competition with other big movies coming out that year of a similar style, like Judge Dredd, Twelve Monkeys, Waterworld, Virtuosity, Hackers, and Tank Girl. So naturally the studios smelt money, and didn't want the leash too long on somebody they had no idea they could trust. Would you trust this asshole with 25 million dollars? In conclusion, this movie's dumb as hell. But then again, technically all the movies from 1995 were in some way to someone. But to me, I love it a lot. And you should too. Anyway, I'll be awaiting your hateful comments to my distasteful, sometimes trollish jokes in the cut. Unknown caller, really? I'm gonna do this again. Hello? Hello, you have a collect call from. Uh, the one? Do you accept the charges? Yeah, sure. Why not? Hello, the one? I know you're out there. Yeah, I just answered the phone. Good guess, Veronica Mars. I can feel you now. Um... I know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. Hey, I would have voted for Obama. I don't know the future. I didn't come here to tell you how this is going to end. I came here to tell you how this is going to begin. I'm gonna hang up this phone, and then I'm gonna show these people what you don't want them to see. That that furry I'm porn was for research only. Without, wait, wait, what? Wait, what? <coughs> Nothing. Continue. I'm going to show them a world without you, a world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries, a world where anything is possible. Where we go from there is a choice I leave to you. If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and try again. You already did that joke, jerk.